I don't know. Every time I, uh, you know, hang out with Ann Coulter, uh, something happens. I, you know, I get into trouble. I either I lose every bit of access I have to the Ted Cruz campaign because she uh, she uh, offended Carly Fiorina. <laughs> Or else I get into a motor vehicle accident for now, which I'm being sued in L.A. trying to make dinner with Ann. I mean, you know, you're starting to be kind of like bad luck for me, Ann. How you doing? This is a bad trend. We're going to have to start getting together more so I can so I can alter the trend. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and, and I'm telling you, you, you need to be a little more gentle when you talk about when you go on hardball. What possessed you to go on hardball? Uh, anything to get the word out. I mean, other than you and <laughs> True. that's about and Charlie Sykes, see. you're not making any appearances these days. No, there are like two other. If I went on with people I agreed with, I'd be doing like two radio shows and occasionally me and Phillips, for Breitbart and Drudge, and that's about it. Yeah, me and <laughs> Phillips in L.A. That's it. That's her. That's yeah, her cadre. yeah. Well, look, I feel your pain, but I just you know he's so vile, Chris Matthews. You know. Um, that that I, he has invited me on that show, and I have told him I would rather you know eat my my own finger. But uh, you did good. You did a good job. Now, what about this interview with Salon Magazine, though? Did you really say that we're importing a third world rape culture? Oh, I didn't do an interview with a s- Salon, but yeah, I mean you've read Adios America, right, right. Um, and and we were talking about um, I, they must be quoting from Hardball. I understand this is trending. You ought to see the tweets I was sending out in, in the last half hour. I'm on, out in LA. I've only been awake for a half an hour, okay. and I sent out a blizzard of tweets um, of some of the research included in in Adios America. And um, did you call about Wisconsin? the Latin American rape culture All right, and did how you it's also- coming to America because we got on, you know, Chris Matthews' little hobby horse last night. It, it drives me crazy how they keep saying, you know, these horrible things Trump has said to women. Well, no, he hasn't said anything bad to women. He had one, one <laughs> intemperate retweet about... An opponent's wife. That isn't about women. That's about an opponent's wife after his own wife had been attacked. I mean, whatever you think of that retweet, and by the way, I'm warming to it at this point. Yeah, I've had it too. with these cruise bots. Right. Um, um, it's about one woman. And as for the, the abortion comments, which they blew up all over the place, I, as I said, um, I think very nicely to Chris Matthews, um, it was a really dumb question uh, because he's running for president. Donald Trump is not running to be, that, that question would be relevant if he were running to be a state legislator in the year 2060 or whenever Roe v. Wade is overturned and therefore, and was living in a state that was going to ban abortion or, or put some restrictions on it, then it would be relevant or being what, confirmed. What the punishment for a woman should be, whether it's a ten dollar fine or a twenty dollar fine, it's a stupid hypothetical question. And I just, you know, threw in incidentally that um, we're going to need a lot more of those abortions if we don't have Donald Trump to stop the Latin American rape culture from pouring in. Oh, okay. And you know, it's. Tr- I mean, I go through. Uh, that's obviously a big part of my book because I couldn't cover all of the different cultural predilections to this or that crime. And I just, I gather from the UVA case, the Duke lacrosse case, the nonsense, the mattress girl, that, that, that liberals still consider rape a serious offense in America. So that's, that's on the bright side. And we're bringing in all sorts of cultures with honor killings and clitorectomies and child rape. Um, so get used to it, America. This is, this is not our culture, and we're bringing them in in such enormous numbers, there isn't even time to assimilate uh, the millions and millions. That's why we need Donald Trump's pause on immigration. I certainly agree with you on the, on the theory, but I, I'm struggling right now, as you must be, with um, this sort of inability of Donald Trump to figure out what the right answer is. Now, see, to me, the first answer he gave is the right answer. I mean, if, if abortion were illegal, um, it would certainly be punishable. <laughs> That's what illegal means. No, I know. I know it shows <laughs> so stick you what to deceptive it. swine these alleged pro-lifers are. Um, that, you know, they will just take any opportunity to attack Trump. Well, we're against abortion, but not so much that we'd, we'd permit a $20 fine on a woman who has, you know, anything to attack Donald Trump. It doesn't seem at all unreasonable. I mean, I understand the pro-life, and I'm, you and I are both a big part of the pro-life movement. I understand that they're, they want the message to be, this isn't anti-woman. We consider the woman a victim, too. But, but that's okay. It still is a little bit nutty. 
I'm, I'm not horrified if there were a fine or something. And that's all he said. There would probably have to be some kind of punishment. It was so obvious he hadn't, he, he was not writing legislation for it. And uh, again, all we need a president to do in the area of abortion is when there's an opening on the Supreme Court, he needs to ask prospective Supreme Court nominees, do you drop LSD before reading the Constitution? <laughs> because as long as they don't do that, they will read the document and see there's nothing in it about abortion. That's right. There's nothing in it. And it's not a privacy issue, but that's, you know, Roe v. Wade is just bad law. You know, my, yeah. my question is after last night, I turned off the TV at, at uh, 935 Eastern Standard Time because once Ted Cruz had been announced the winner and Bernie Sanders, they really, I didn't need to see any of the speeches. I've heard them all before and they bore me no end. But I will tell you this. Uh, I did not find it a turning point last night. What I found it is if this doesn't motivate the Donald Trump supporters out there, especially the ones in New York and California, then nothing will. The con yes. contested convention is a done deal. And uh, I got to tell you, these people are playing real dirty. Ted Cruz is, uh, has accumulated delegates from Louisiana to Alabama uh, all the way now to um, – what was uh, uh, he took away? What few Arizona. delegates there were in Texas? I mean, you know, no, he's a dirty, cheating political he operative. I feel like we're up against the Clintons again. Um, this is not for Cruz to get the nomination. The idea that these these moron Cruz supporters think that, oh, at a brokered convention, I'm sure Reince Priebus and Mitch McConnell will say, let's give it to Ted Cruz. No, I promise you, Bernie is more likely to be our nominee right. at a brokered convention than Ted Cruz is. This is just part of the stop. Um, Trump movement. He's the only one, and he probably will get to 1237, by the way, at least according to the New York Times delegate counter. He only has to keep doing as well as he has been doing. But I also think it's in, in, in terms of Cruz being um, a dirty political manipulator like the Clintons, um, it's worth pointing out here, and, and you can't find this precise graph any place. Someone should do it. I don't really feel like it. But I did go through, my, my sense of things is that Cruz wins nine out of ten caucuses, right? Um, and Trump wins nine out of ten elections. So, um, little footnote here: the election, the general election, is not going to be a caucus. Right. Now, what is different about caucuses and elections? Well, caucuses are easy to cheat. Yeah. Um, they're run by the state parties. There's no poll watching. There's no reviewing the votes. In addition to the fact that generally caucuses are things that take all day. Um, if you haven't been through it before, you're going to be discouraged. You don't just go in. Um, walk in and vote in the privacy of, of a voting booth. No, it has to be in front of everyone. There are, we, there are a lot of reports in Utah how people were just, you know, passing at, they'd go into the caucus room and just a huge slew of ballots would be passed out. And, and in order to be, to be strictly fair about things, they'd tell people only take one ballot. Mm. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then ballots being brought in. Now, isn't that curious? I've never noticed this in, ele in an election before, how Cruz is really dominating all the cheatable caucuses, <laughs> but not the fair primaries, which are run like real elections. And this is, as you say, the same guy who's going down flipping Trump delegates in Louisiana. So even after Trump goes to Louisiana, campaigns heavily and wins, He's, now they're saying he's going to get fewer delegates out of that election? No, I'm sorry. That is not fair. No, it is not fair. And I look at, uh, you know, I look at Bill Kristol all excited and happy. You know, Bill Kristol wrote more scathing articles about Ted Cruz during the last three years than probably any other writer that I can think of. I pulled him up, and there are numerous articles. And now he's, uh, you know, he's all out there promoting Ted Cruz as the candidate. You know, what a bunch of hypocrites. They, and you're yeah. right. They have no intention of letting Ted Cruz be the nominee. Well, the one-week star, Charlie Sykes, whom never, no one had ever heard of before, but since he's a talk radio host in Wisconsin, who was aggressively anti-Trump, for the past week you haven't been able to turn on TV without seeing him. Okay, once the election is over last night, he says, well, of course, you know, I, we don't want Cruz, but this will at least lead to a brokered convention so we can get a fresh face in. Unbelievable. A fresh face that uh, has been in politics for the last 60 years, one of those fresh faces. you know. Yes, and has done so much to change things. Right. Exactly. Well, listen, if I thought they'd bring in, you know, Newt or something, I would probably be a little more, uh, you know, excited. But I know they won't. So um, it can't be anyone but Trump. It was, but the one thing that I think they are not cal counting on um, is, I mean, I think who they'd probably want to bring in, they want to keep Paul Ryan 
in the House so they can get amnesty through. This is all about immigration. Just remember that. Do not listen to the prattle on TV. It is all about keeping the cheap labor flowing. Um, Ryan is for flowing, keeping the cheap labor flowing, so they want, need to keep him in the House. That's how amnesty has been blocked in the past. I think they'd turn to Mitt Romney um, and tell him, look, you have an easier opponent this time. It's Hillary. It's not, it's not the great Democratic star Obama. Um, but I think Romney isn't that stupid. I don't think anyone would be that stupid. What are you giving that person? Right. Nothing. You're giving them a nomination after stealing it from the front runner. And I actually think Trump is going to get 1237, but let's say he doesn't make 1237. I mean, maybe people like you and I, regular voters who never miss an election, we are going to go out and, you know, close our eyes and vote for whomever has an R after his name. But that 30% of new voters Trump is bringing out, people who haven't voted for 30 years, they're not voting for the Republican. We're going to lose. So yeah. why would you take that? Why would you take the nomination at a brokered convention? You're not being given a chance to win. You're being given a chance to humiliate yourself. Yeah, to lose against Hillary Clinton. I mean, that's that's got to be, you know, the low and point of hated. Yeah, the the low point of anybody's career. Well, and um, you know, we just keep pounding the drum. I uh, I keep uh, saying the same things over and over again, but apparently you know, the, the forces that are working against Trump are so powerful. I had no idea. We really have exposed. We pulled back the curtain on, on the political class and the elites, and, and it's, 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 it's demoralizing. Yes, and it proves they never... It's always been BS when they pretend to care about our concerns and, oh, don't worry, we'll stop Obama's amnesty. Mm. I mean, they lied to us about Rubio's amnesty. We'll repeal Obamacare. Yeah, it's yeah. all lies. They have no intention of doing it because finally we have a candidate who will do it, and they are hysterical. Right. So, okay, now at least we know, you guys, it's not just that you're incompetent. You don't want to do the things you're telling us you're going to do. Right, exactly. Well, thank you. How long are you going to be out there in L.A.? Forever? Um, no, i got to go back east um, for the New York primary. I'm going to okay. be in Florida for a while. And uh, then I'll probably come back out here before the California primary. But I'm going to stay in the um, east, at least, maybe not the northeast for New York, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. Not All that right. it makes a difference. I just like to be there. No, I agree. <laughs> I, I like to be there, too. I'll be in California, and, uh, and, and we'll both be in Cleveland <laughs> soon yes. enough. <laughs> yes, planning to riot, apparently. Yes, I'm ready. Um, I, got my, <laughs> I got my old, uh, you know, riot gear pulled out. <laughs> Ann Coulter from Los Angeles. Read the book, Adios America. Read all the books so at least you know what you're talking about. Thanks, Ann. Good to talk to you, Joyce. Bye-bye. Always a pleasure.